J-Bad Talk, Sergeant Hasler. We need immediate air support. <laughs> We're heading down the ravine towards the Chicago. Roger that, Murphy. We need him immediate cast. Lieutenant, I need your 10 digit grid. Please hurry, sir. Murphy, Thank you. Oh, God. coming home from that mission. We, we we're gonna die. We're gonna get shot down on the way in. We're gonna run out of fuel and just be in Pakistan and, and live our short, short, miserable lives in a Pakistani prison. If anyone's gonna blow himself up, it's Bin Laden. We're not coming back. The guy that ended up in the point man position taking me up the stairs of Bin Laden's bedroom, he, he pulled me aside before we left and he said, don't take this the wrong way, I'm going. But if we know we're gonna die, why are we going? which is just legit. He wanted to say it out loud. And I said, that's, that's a good point. Um, we are not going for fame and we are not going for bravado. We are going for the single mom who dropped her kids off at elementary school on a Tuesday morning. And then 45 minutes later, she jumped to her death out of a skyscraper because that was a better alternative than burning alive because it's 2,500 degrees inside. And her last gesture of human decency was to hold her skirt down so nobody could see her underwear as she committed suicide. And she didn't want to do any of that. She wasn't supposed to be in the fight. We're supposed to fight, that's why we're going. We were a week and a half into planning that big mission. We had some of the best minds planning the mission to kill Bin Laden and we rehearsed the perfect plan over and over and over. Every day with real helicopters on a real training site, 14 hours a day, and then afterwards we'd talk about it around a table with a, with a replica. And one night, um, the boss said, all right guys, what's the worst thing that could happen? And the youngest guy in the room said, well, hey, the helicopter could crash in the front yard. He's like, what? I mean, can we talk about that for 20 seconds? And that happened. Um, but we were able to take a potentially catastrophic event and turn it into something great because of our preparation. No matter what, we never quit. People will be so close to a goal 95% of the way there and have a bad day and then throw their hands, you know, or a series of bad days. That's it, I quit, I'm done, you know. You are not having a bad life, you're having a bad day. Mike and two teammates had taken position on the outcropping of a rooftop when an insurgent grenade bounced off Mike's chest and landed on the roof. Mike had a clear chance to escape, but he realized that the other two SEALs did not. In that terrible moment, he had two options, to save himself or to save his friends. For Mike, there was no choice at all. He threw himself onto the grenade and absorbed the blast with his body. One of the survivors puts it this way. Mikey looked death in the face that day and said, you cannot take my brothers, I will go in their stead. It took us about an hour and some change to get to where we were going. Uh, the ramp dropped on the back of the helicopter. When the ropes came out, I remember it was so black 
that our, our night vision goggles, our NVGs, um, they need ambient light to work, okay? And they weren't even picking up any light, and we couldn't see. That's how, that's how dark it was. And we were about 40, 35, 40 feet off the ground. So we, we uh, Axe and I were on one side, Mikey and Danny on the other, grabbed the ropes, fast roped out, hit the side of the mountain, and uh, landed in a snowbank. Our target was only um, four miles from us, but it took us eight and a half hours to get there. That's how bad the terrain was, okay? We were skirting the sides of this mountain. We'd, man, we'd catch into these sand traps, and a guy would just disappear right in front of you, you know? We get to our target. On one side of the mountain, there was a village, nothing going on, and then our village, our objective was on this side. Our target, out of that thicket of uh, trees, 70 meters, then it broke out into about 100 meters of grass, straight down. Kind of give you an idea, those of you, you know what a double black diamond is, you don't know who ski? Kind of like that, you know what I mean? We had to dig the ground out, and I was leaning against the mountain like this, and when I wanted to watch the target, I'd lean off the mountain and grab those trees and just bring my binos up or my camera and my rifle or whatever it was. Well, 100 meters of grass and it hourglassed, and then there's a it snake down, and there's there a river down there, and then there was our objective. So we set up in a triangle formation. I was at the top, Axe was to my right about 15 meters, Mikey was underneath me and Danny was to my left on the radio. So we sat there and sat there, man, there wasn't nothing going on. And I was like, all right, we're gonna be sitting here for seven days, you know, probably and nothing gonna happen, because that happens. But we were sitting there and I was looking on my target and all of a sudden, you know, I get back on glass, which means I'm on my scope and I'm looking and all of a sudden these little brown legs jump over the, the muzzle of my rifle. And I'm like, and it's not one of my guys. And the first guy I saw had two RPGs on his back and an AK-47. He was postured up, looking down, right down at us. And then there was about 60 guys in line with him, looking down over us. And then I looked on my left flank, and there was about 50 to 60 guys coming down on that side, and just as many on our left side. And I was just like, oh, good Lord, man. I was just like, whoa. And uh, I turned, you know, I turned my, hit my safety, and I was just, I looked back at Mikey. I was like, get ready, man. I'm, I'm taking, you know, I'm taking it. I was, I'm starting it. Let's move. Let's really move.